Hey, everybody. Welcome to our final class uh, before finals. Well, I got to talk loud because the Zoom people. No, <laughs> ah, finals are already. And oh, my bad. Hands look bad. That hands look fucking job. You dropped the ball. And she's supposed to be yeah. that. All right. Uh, we will have our final next Tuesday. It is on paper. It is in person. You need to be here on Tuesday from 6 to 8, uh, the, which is May 16th. Five. My bad. <laughs> Just totally going to fuck everybody up. Class is five to seven, not six. Don't listen to me. Normal class time next week. Yes, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Five to seven next week, next Tuesday is our final. Thursdays starts class, the final exam schedule. All of your classes are canceled at that point. You only have to show up for the final exam that's scheduled. Your teacher should tell you what day and time that is. Our official final exam day is Tuesday, May 23rd. We're doing our exam on May 16th, but I still have to hold class on May 23rd. So if you'd like to come see what you did and ask about statistics and stuff, please come in. There are some that are talking about doing a potluck, and I'm all on board with that. I like food. Uh, so that's May 23rd, but next week is May 16th. Be here. Let's go over the practice exam. There are 10 questions. I will zoom back out for this. That is the wrong direction, Jones. So we'll have 10 questions on our final. Yes. That's for 20%. I think it's 20. No. I think all categories were 20. I don't know. I'll have to look. It's on the syllabus. Read the fucking syllabus. Quit asking me these things. Oh, so there's 10 questions. Quit distracting me. You're slowing this shit down. There's 10 questions. Two of them are confidence intervals. One is on proportions, and one is on means. And you'll see them all in a second. We have a hypothesis test. We had, and I'm going to make the list on the right. I'll do this right here too. I'm going to leave this showing underneath my final exam while I'm practicing on it. So this was CI. Here is my hypothesis test. We had a one proportion test. We had a one mean test. Then we had a two proportion test. We had a two mean test and a paired mean test. So that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five. Six was the goodness of fit. And making that kind of small, let me zoom in right while I write it. Goodness of fit. We had the chi-square test for independence. And we had a NOAA. I'm so sad. Zelda comes out tomorrow and I can't play it until I'm done grading finals because otherwise I won't grade finals until like the fucking 25th and I'll be like so back I'll have to like not sleep have to do some meth to stay awake just to grade finals it's not a good idea I need to grade finals before I do Zelda I don't do meth that was a joke so and I do not have a prescription for Adderall God, I wish that would be great. Why don't you get an essay? What? Like a student, like, good or some credit. You know, other professors have that? 
Yeah, but none of them will grade. You can't, have, you, can't, can grade? you can't have SIs grade your shit. No. Because then you've got students grading other students and they're like, sure, you've got an A. What, how much you got? All right. So uh, you for these, like the proportions, each of the proportion ones, I'll write this over here. You will either be given, you'll see like you'll see a percentage or something like X out of Y people or X, Y, you know, there's, there's something that indicates that you might have a, a fraction. The means, the means test tend to tell you, you will see somewhere in the problem, you will see mean. You will see the word average. You'll see one of those. Okay, so when we've got we've got two different ones that are means that are two. So what was the difference on? Two mu versus paired. On the pair, each group must have the same sample size. If it doesn't, it's automatically not it. And on the other one, it can be the same size, but usually isn't. Give me this right before I got talk. Now I gotta balance snacking with presenting. F. God damn, I cracked myself up. All right. What about goodness of fit and chi square and the ANOVA? These three had. Well, let's start with these two on top first. Goodness of fit. And chi-square generally are in a table format. Usually. Goodness of fit. This is one of the, the one where we're trying to see H naught was uh, the percentages match expected. Or per percentages slash proportions match expected. And HA was at least one didn't. So the question will ask you, it will have something in there like that. Does, does it have the, are the proportions correct or something like that? The, the goodness of fit and chi-square are usually the ones students have the most trouble on. Square is rows versus columns. And the wording of the question usually includes, is there a relationship? It might say correlation or something like that between and then it will say what the rows are. Like if it's gender, it will say between gender and uh, the columns, which may be like selection or preference or something like that. 
Those two are the hardest ones to tell the difference between because they come in the same format. Good. What? Oh. And finally, ANOVA. You might have, there might be three sets of data. Maybe. Yeah, there's got to be three sets of data. Uh, three plus, three or more. And this is comparing the means. So of the ones that have more than three, three or more, only one of them says means. ANOVA is the one that says means on it. Zoom in for a second, that way the people that decide to sit in the back of the fucking room don't have to do oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will be putting project grades up either tonight or tomorrow. I'm still waiting on the last name. So for the people that it shows a zero to, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was going to auto fill in a zero already. I don't, it was oh, supposed to wait for me to enter grade. <laughs> Shelby hit me with a panic. You guys are all right. There's no way. There's no way. No way. That would be on canvas or It'll be on canvas. All right. Wait, Shelby's pin is still blazing. I need that. Wait a second. Do I want to know how much the jerky was? Because it's almost gone already. No. No, I, that's because I want more. Do I want to know how much it is? Yeah, you do. You guys won't need your computers on the final day. <laughs> It'll be fine. I will have everything that you need. It will all be on the test. Are you ready yet, Shelby? Oh, good God, girl. I know, I'm just fucking with her. And I'm only fucking with her because she started sweating me over the project in a day and a half. Well, when it's in zero and it dropped my grade of 50%, oh, yeah. And stop moving. I assume you're ready. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave this list here because notice. There is 10 here, and I told you there was 10 questions. So as I go through them, I'm going to just fucking cross them off. That's a good way to go about your test. Write that list down in the beginning. Cross them out. Maybe go through the test and identify what they are first. They're going to be in a different order than here. Just go through and identify, maybe right next to the problem, what each problem is, and make sure you can cross off all 10 and feel comfortable about it and then go back and do it. So having done that, saying I do that, the first thing you should do on a test is what? Write your name. L. Pepe. All right. Question one uh, is on Canvas. I didn't print out copies for everyone. This is the Motorola one. 
The Motorola wishes to estimate the mean talk time. Ooh, look at that. It says mean here. I like that. The mean talk time for its V505 camera phone before the battery must be recharged. I wonder how old that fucking phone is. The new random sample of 35 phones. The mean talk time was 325 with a standard deviation of 31 minutes. StatCrunch generates a 95% confidence interval with the lower limit equaling 314.35 and an upper limit of 335.65. What does this tell us? Well, it says mean, so it's going to be a mean one, and it gives us a confidence interval. So this has got to be the confidence interval for means. I'm going to write problem one number one next to it when I track it. What this tells us, this is, a, this is asking for the confidence statement. We are 95% confident. That the mean talk time, really just pulling information from their sentence. The mean talk time for Motorola's V505 phone. is between the lower limit and the upper limit, 314.35. The mean talk time is in minutes. So this is in minutes. It's between 314.35 minutes and 335.65 minutes. So that answered the first part. What does this tell us? The second part says, what population parameter is being examined here? This is a proportions confidence interval. Not proportions, fact. Mean confidence. On to my next piece of jerky. I don't think I have 10 pieces left. I'm going to run out before the end of this exam. This is bad. I'm going to be sad. Any questions? Or a practice Okay, number two, a researcher wants to show whether the acidity of rain, the pH level near Houston is significantly different from that near Chicago. In a random sample of 12 rain dates in Texas, he found a sample mean pH of 4.77 with a standard deviation, a sample mean, and I got two groups. Houston and Chicago. This is going to be either a two mean test or a paired test. Not sure which one yet. So I see mean has got standard deviation and it says in the random sample of the other one, it's got 14 rain dates. 
So my sample sizes are different. 12 and 14 tells me it can't be paired. This has got to be the two mean test. So I'm going to write a two next to that. Cross that one out. What type of hypothesis test is used for this study? A two means test. <clears throat> oh shit. Oh yeah, there we go, StatCrunch. StatCrunch gives me a T-stat value of 2.2676, and it gives me a P-value of 0 0.0197. So my P-value is 0 0.0197. My alpha is 0 0.05. We'll get to that in a second. We're going to need those. <clears throat> what is the null and alternate hypothesis for a two-means test? Well, here he said significantly different. So it doesn't say greater than or less than, it says different. That tells me something about HA. Equals and not equals. And since I have two groups, I should label them. Even though it doesn't really matter here, it might matter on the test and you should always label them anyways. I'm just gonna call group one Houston and group two Chicago. <clears throat> so that it's a two means test. I have my H naught and my HA. And now I need to figure out, does the evidence suggest that the pH of rain in Houston is greater than the pH of rain in Chicago? My p-value is less than my alpha. My p-val is too low. Reject the hoe. Support HA. Okay. I strongly recommend you write what this the answer to that part right there because it guides the end the next answer. And if you go from this to the next part wrong, I at least know you understood the p-value and alpha thing. I see this all the time where they don't write this line down here, and the next line has the wrong information. I'm like, I don't know if you understood it, what was going on or not, and it looks like you just guessed. So. I give less points if this line is not showing and you're wrong. So you're better off just writing. Uh, is it going to be not too low or it'll be too low? Here was too low. We're supporting HA and HA was really different. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim. And I'm going to go back up. I'm going to read the sentence. Uh, the acidity of rain in Houston is significantly different than that in Chicago. There's sufficient evidence to support the claim that the acidity of rain in Houston is different than Chicago. This is the kind of information I'm like, that's, that is an answered question and it's done. This is the kind of information I'm looking for on each of the hypothesis tests. On each hypothesis test, I want you to tell me which test it was. I want you to tell me what the null and alternate hypothesis are. And if there's more than two groups, the groups should be labeled. Sometimes if it's not, if it's greater than or less than, the question will tell you what order they should go in. 
I'm looking for this. I'm looking for that p-val comparison. I am looking for how three tells you how to answer four. And then the statement is number five. Those are the five things I'm looking for. If you have all those and you're right, full credit. Why'd you give me an empty bag? Your full bag, I mean. Oh. <laughs> Good jerky. All right, you guys ready for number next one? So the name of the test, the H naught and HA, whether P value is less than alpha or greater than alpha. Tell me what greater than or less than alpha means in terms of rejecting or not rejecting H naught. And give me the statement. Conclusion. So Sam, we missed like every part. <laughs> and you get a zero on that question. The whole question. Oh, on number five. How are you going to miss every part on number five? I don't know. That's the one I'm struggling with. Like most of it, I'm just pulling from the part above. And then look at it. The P value is too low. You want to reject the whole. So it's like a whole. So you can learn. You know, so, so the way you look at it, <laughs> yeah, the other one's not, not, not I hope I have a not, not, not here. Uh, the way you look at it is if you write this sentence out, it says support HA. HA is there is a difference. Okay, and then come up here and go, is that what the researcher was saying? The researcher was saying that there was a difference. And this says there's a difference. So it was supporting his work. That what in his research had to support it. So you can kind of reason out what goes in here. Does that does that help that? Yeah. Because this is the part you're you're probably stuck on. Yeah, yeah. I think um it's the sufficient So sufficient is whether or not we're backing up HA or not. And you can really go, okay, does did my results show that the researcher or whoever it was was right? I remember it was a mountain, but it's like you're too high. You're not the age, so there is not sufficient. That is another way to do it too. Default setting is sufficient. The other option you will have is if this does not apply to this problem, but a p value is greater than alpha, you're going to say p-val is not too low. Do not reject h naught. Do not support HA. And there is not enough evidence. See how all the knots go together like that? We got a knot, we got a knot, we got a knot, we got a knot. Any question like that? We'll find out. There better be, because I haven't designed the final yet. It is the same format as this. Like I make my practice and then I go through and change shit. <clears throat> One of these years. And it's, I promise you, it's not going to be this year. I'm just going to make the final, the exact same thing as the practice final and see who the fuck paid attention. And we matter in shit when I still get asked. That's what's putting me off from ever doing it. Because I'm going to be so mad, so disappointed if I walk through every answer on the fucking final and people still don't get an A on it. I get making mistakes, but like, I'll show you the answer. Come on. That's not happening here. This is not your final exam. So don't get excited. Why don't we start this semester? I'm not ready for it. I need to be emotionally. 
Maybe Jenna's will be. She showed me some love. <laughs> no, you're not, you're not getting this as the, the final. To clarify that, since I'm on recording, she gave me a gift card. She didn't show me some love. That was, uh, that was I, I want to make sure I wasn't making an inappropriate comment about student. Yeah, I get in trouble for the weirdest shit. I tell you what, I, I, I had to talk to someone about uh, saying shit in my class, and I didn't say racist shit. I was trying to stop racist shit in my class one time. Like someone kept pointing out that they were of African American descent and therefore they were not good at math. And I said, the color of your skin does not affect your ability to do math. And someone, not that person, someone else said I was talking about skin color in the class, complained about it. And so I had to go explain what went on. And the person who had to go there and meet me after I did it, and they said, Yeah, that's what he said. And then they're like, well, Why the fuck are you reporting him? He didn't do anything wrong. But they, they still tried. All right. The medical three different techniques to lower cholesterol levels of patients with high cholesterol levels. The subjects are randomly selected and assigned to one of three groups. Group one is given medication. Group two is given exercise. And group three is assigned a diet program. At the end of six weeks, six weeks, each subject, sub, blah, blah, blah. each subject's cholesterol level is recorded. The researcher wanted to compare the difference in the means. There's the difference in the means, and there are three groups. The one that does means for more than two is ANOVA. This is an ANOVA test. Stat crunch generates a F stat given and a P value of 0 0.019 or 11. It says, what can, can be concluded by the results of this test? Use alpha equals 0 0.05. So 0 0.011 is less than 0 0.05. This is an example of too low. Reject the hoe. Support HA. Okay, so what is my age not an HA? On the ANOVA test, H naught for ANOVA is mean one equals mean two equals dot, 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 however many means there are. They're all equal. HA, at least one mean is different. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my Nova test. The groups are already labeled here. I don't need to worry about labeling them. I got my p-value versus alpha. I've got my decision-making results here. <clears throat> I got my null and alternate hypothesis. The thing I'm missing is my statement, my conclusion. I want to support HA, and HA is at least one mean is different. So if I'm supporting it, there's enough evidence. There is sufficient evidence. We support the claim. that the mean cholesterol level, which is what it was talking about, is different for at least one of the groups.
These seem like weird numbers for a cholesterol level. They're all just whole numbers. It seems like some bullshit. I do see group one's got a bunch of two digit numbers and group two's got a bunch of low numbers and it even has a fucking zero. So I'm guessing they're all different, not just one's different. Yeah, those numbers are pretty low for cholesterol. <laughs> they must be like really, really healthy or right. like, are they alive or? <clears throat> Number four. Are we good? Before I advance. You good, Shelby? Perlina is just fucking gone on speedboat on her riding. She's no she's fucking playing with her phone now. <laughs> I had that shit written down before you finished, Jones. I did the you put this up online. I already did this shit. I know what I'm doing. I don't even know why I'm sitting here, she says. Number four, a simple random sample of 320 adults were asked their favorite ice cream flavor. Of the 320 adults surveyed, 58 responded that they preferred mint chocolate chip. Testing the claim that less than 25% of adults prefer mint chocolate chip in Stat Crunch. So there's only one group they're talking about here. And they told me it's a percentage. This has got to be a one proportion test. There's only one group. <clears throat> That's important. Then it says, testing the claim that less than 25% of adults prefer mint chocolate chip. This seems like a pretty important fact. That is what? Is that H naught or HA? What? What did you mean? I'm sorry. Is the, the claim that less than 25% of adults prefer mint chocolate chip? Is that H naught or H A? H A. You can say 25%, or if you put 0 0.25, both will work. I'm not being too picky here. As long as I know that you're talking about a percentage or proportion, what does that make H naught? Equals. All right, I've got a couple things done. I've got my name, I've got my null and alternate hypothesis. Now I need to go, okay, I answered the question. What type of hypothesis test was being used? One proportion test. What can be concluded at the alpha equals 0 0.05 level of significance? I need to compare my p-value the p-value is given at 0 0.0023. My alpha was 0 0.05. God, I hope I have a do not support on here. It's not going to make a very good practice exam if there's not a do not support. P value is less than alpha. It is too low. I will reject the hope. Take that bitch out. <laughs> Support HA. No, no, not kick that bitch out. I will tell Santa no. I do not want your ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so I'm supporting HA here. <laughs> And HA was that 25, less than 25% preferred it. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim Am I hitting record? Please tell me I fucking hit record. Yeah, I did. Excellent that, and I'm really gonna come up here and just read this line. Less than 25% of adults prefer mint chocolate chip. Ice cream. I 
I wonder if I had said, asked them, they did the question about regular chocolate ice cream, what their answer would be. I'm curious. Or about vanilla too. As a child, all the way up till probably I was in my 20s, I thought people that liked vanilla were fucking broken. How could you possibly like vanilla ice cream? It's fucking bland. It is not. But now I really like turned into an adult and I try not try vanilla ice cream again. I'm like, this is pretty tasty. Why was I going pew pew all over the rest of the time? This is pretty good. All right, so let me make sure I hit everything. I got my name of the test. I got my test for p-valve versus alpha. I've got my decision-making sentence. I've got my null and alternate hypothesis, and I have a conclusion. I think I got everything there. I think we're looking good. Are there any questions on that one? All right. Next question. According to the Insurance Information Institute, the mean expenditure for auto mean, it says mean right there. The mean expenditure for auto insurance in the United States was $774 in 2002. An insurance salesperson believes that mean expenditure for auto insurance is different now. So it's different. Just make a little notes for myself. He obtains a random sample of 35 auto insurance policies and determines the mean expenditure to be $735 with a standard deviation of $48.31. He's only got one group. That means this is a one means test. That's the short way of saying it. You could say it is a means test for one sample, one purport, one population. I think one means test gets it done. Now it asks, is there enough evidence to conclude that the mean expenditure for auto insurance is different? So let's take a look. Well, Let's set up our H0 and our HA here. You know what? I want you guys to change this p-value right here. I want you to have the p-value. Let's make the p-value. Uh, 0.04. I want to make sure at least one of these damn tests has a not in it. This is me forcing my hand on it, but it doesn't change H not and HA here. This is a means test and it's one group. The null hypothesis for a mean, one means test is mu equals something. What is that mu equal to? 774, exactly. It's equal to the one that the pre-existing information. So that was a, a good pull from the, the question you're showing. Good. Especially if you slap a dollar sign on it so it makes sense. What is HA? Not equal. He says it's different now. So it's not equal to $774. All right, now he wants us to compare the p-value, or we need to compare the p-value. My p-value that I'm using is gonna be 0 0.04, and the alpha listed is 0 0.01. This is different than the original setup, so. Oh, this was a one means test. 
This was number five. I didn't cross off number four. What was number four? A one proportion test? It was a one proportion test. So if I compare these here, even though if I had used 0.05, it would be less than, they wanted 0 0.01 and the p-value is greater than 0 0.01. So the p-value is not too low. Do not reject H naught. Do not support HA. We got not, not, not going on. That tells me how to answer my sentence. There is not enough evidence. to support the researcher's claim, to support the salesperson's claim. That the mean, mean expenditure for insurance That's a long way of saying cost, isn't it? Expenditure. The mean cost of insurance. Is different. Than $774. And since alpha is a little bit different than the normal one, I'm going to say at the 0 0.01 level of significance. If you're presenting research in a paper, this is a good idea if you use a different alpha. It's good to point out that you're not going with the standard. Empty. Like a sandwich, big jerky bag is empty. What? I said next time you need two. I do need two. Hansel didn't care enough about his grade to bring tablets. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I cracked myself up. It's never enough. It's never enough. <laughs> you cannot do right. <laughs> If it had been a gift card, it would have been this is fucking short. Oh, man. No, that's a joke. All right. Okay, number six. Nationally. The distribution of weapons used in a robbery is shown in the table below. It's giving me a bunch of proportions. It says the following data represents the weapon of choice in 1,652 robberies on school property. Does the distribution of weapons and choice in robberies in school follow the national distribution? This is asking, are the percentages the same? That's what it's really asking. If it follows the natural distribution, we're gonna have the same percent. So the one that, and there's more than three groups here. There's three or more groups here. This is either goodness of fit or chi-square. And since we're checking to see if percentages match, this is a goodness of fit test. Goodness of fit. Does the distribution of weapons and choices in robberies in schools follow the national distribution? They gave me a p-value less than 0 0.0001. 
and we're comparing it to alpha equals 0 0.05. The p-value is too low, so we're going to reject the HO and support HA. So maybe we should figure out what H0 and HA are. You can hear it all the way back there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, it doesn't bite. If it does bite, I warn you. I will warn. Hansel still never moved, and he's never complained. So <laughs> doesn't bite too much. Oh yeah, Tommy did move. Well. Yeah, but Tom. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. I smell so much bad shit. I guess. Yeah. It wasn't for me though. My shit smells like roses. All right. So we're rejecting H naught. We're not. We're supporting H A. We need to figure out what H0 and HA are. So what is H0 and HA? On a goodness of fitness test, the proportions match expected. And HA, at least one proportion does not. Okay, so I got my name, I've got my, or the title of the test, I've got my null and alternate hypothesis, I've done the decision tree thing for p-value versus alpha, I've said what my decision is going to be, support HA, I just need to actually say that statement that says it. I need to support HA, which is that it doesn't match. There is sufficient sufficient evidence to show that the distribution of weapon choices the page here in robberies on schools, in robberies in schools, does not follow the national distribution. So the question is, does the question asked, did it follow the national distribution? And our answer was at least one did. That's what HA says. At least one of them doesn't follow the national distribution. I'm harassing the shit out of my student yesterday. She's constantly overreacting to when I fart. And she got up and left the room uh, to go to the bathroom at one point. So when she came back and she and I had farted again and she she got a little like when she overreacted, I said, wait till you put your books away. Take a good deep whiff from your backpack when you put them. <laughs> oh, I didn't do anything. But she was really skeptical about it in her backpack. <laughs> you did did you guys hear about the lady that was selling her parts online? Oh, that was like this is some yeah, it's been a little while. Yeah. Yes. 
Did you hear that she had to go to the hospital because she was too gassy? The food she was eating was making her too gassy and it caused internal problems. She had to stop her business of selling methane. Self-sourced milk and methane. Yeah, true story. Good times. All right, question number seven. An auto dealer decided to enroll with salespeople in a training program to help increase sales. Here are the sales for each salesperson in the month before the program and the month after the, before the month. Sorry. Here are the sales for each salesperson in the month before the program and then the month after the program. So we get a before and after thing. Uh, 0, 0.05 level test the claim that the sales program is effective in increasing sales. So I've got two groups here. I've got group before, I'll call that group one. Wait, I'm gonna hold off on labeling them. I've got two groups. So this is one of the two group tests. And there's no way to do a proportion out of this. This is looking like the paired mean test. So they want to say the claim is the sales program is effective in increasing sales. If it's effective, which group should have the higher numbers? Here we have to reason this out. If the sales program is effective increasing sales, should my numbers before or after be higher? After, right? They took the program, the sales went up, I should have higher numbers. So after should have greater values than before. That's how I'm gonna pick my groups. I'm gonna say group one is after, and group one or group two is before. So that, that's my labeling I'm gonna use. Group one is after, group two is before. And that allows me to set up my H naught and H A because I want, this is about, it's not a proportion, it's gotta be a mean. This has gotta be mu one is greater than mu two because I have the greater than symbol right here. And H naught is mu one is equal to mu two. So that one very much matters how you label them, changes the way the alternate hypothesis is. You have to label the groups. If you don't label the groups on something like this, you're not getting full credit. So you gotta stop and reason out what is it saying? All right, I have a p-value of 0 0.0221, and I have a given alpha of 0 0.05. I think all of them are below on this test. I'm glad I flipped one earlier. The p-value is less than alpha. The p-value is too low. Reject the hoe. Bye, Santa. Support HA. HA is mu1 is bigger than mu2. Mu1 bigger, being bigger than mu2 was saying after was greater than before. And after being greater than before meant the sales program worked. So this says sales program worked. So I need to write my sentence like that. There is sufficient evidence. You support the claim. That the sales training program is effective in increasing sales.
your mind and some mind? <laughs> Probably not. Part of the reason she got away with selling them is because she was pretty and there are crazy fucking people out there. People saw like their used underwear and like all kinds of other stuff. Like I'm pretty sure you that is less bizarre to me than parts. But you're selling to the whole world. There's gonna be someone like, you know what? Fuck it. No. Oh. Yeah, but is it worth trying to bother? Oh god. Are you gonna start selling them more stuff? Uh, that was my hypothesis. That I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I make enough money teaching that I don't need to try to pick up a little extra cash uh, blowing wind into a bottle. Like those ones that go. Everybody's got their kink now. Who am I to judge? What? <laughs> right, they do. The foot, the foot fetishes is surprisingly uh, a larger group of people than you would expect. Now that would be a good hypothesis test. What proportion of Americans have a foot fetish? You know who Quentin? You would have to do it completely anonymous. No one. Well, maybe not. Some people are like, "Oh yeah, I like feet. Proud of it." Other people may not want to answer this, so you'd have to be kind of curious. All right, back to the back to the exam. Zoloft is a drug used to treat OCD. <laughs> yeah, you know me. <laughs> OPP, right? Yeah. Who's down with OPP? <laughs> Who's down with OCD? All right. In randomized double-blind clinical trials, nine hundred twenty-six patients diagnosed with OCD were randomly divided into two groups. All right, we got two groups. And I just did the paired means test. This has got to be a two popular or two proportions test. This has got to be the two proportions test before I even continue reading because I've eliminated the other two groups. You're going to give us those? No. This is the one that you said that we can write those down. Yeah, you should write those names down at the beginning when you start your test. Write them down on that, you know, across the top. On the back. So we bring a little paper and then some bread? No, it's got to be on the test. No, yeah, I'm not handing out paper to test to anybody that's got paper still on their their table. I'm not. I'm not following. You're not going to do me like that. Why do you hate it? It's not that I hate you. You're lucky I give you a practice <laughs> exam, and I show you how to do it. I could just say, "Here, go." Another student in my math class the other day, and um. They heard the like professor emailed the math lab saying that they couldn't help them on like the. I think it was like a practice final or something. On the practice final, ridiculous. Or a take home final, but why would you? On the take home test, yes, yeah. they should be doing it on their own. Yeah. Who gives a take home final though? Who is this? That's even crazier than what I'm doing. Take home chess, yes, but take home final. All right, <clears throat> so we've got two groups. It says subjects in group one, uh, the experimental group received the Zoloft, while subjects in group two receive a placebo. Uh, of the 553 subjects in the experimental group, 77 experienced dry mouth, and of the 377 in the control group, 34 experienced dry mouth. Do a higher proportions of subjects experience dry mouth who are taking so off versus placebo? Got the hiccups again. It's trying to give me the hiccups. So, does a higher proportion of subjects doing zo uh, doing Zoloft is there a higher proportion for Zoloft versus placebo? This is saying is the proportion for Zoloft greater than the proportion for placebo. That's going to give me a way to, to mark my groups. I'm going to call group one the Zoloft group. And group two is my placebo. These are your sugar pill group. Is 
it gave me Zoloft is greater than placebo. Well, first I'm gonna say what type of high hypothesis test is being used. This is a two proportion test. So my H naught and HA both need to be about proportions. And I said P1 was greater than P2 for my HA. Zoloft is greater than placebo. And so P1 is that they are equal. Some people make you do all this shit on StackCrunch. Some teachers don't even let you use fucking computers. They want you to do this shit by hand. I am a merciful God. <laughs> <laughs> you should all be grateful you have Lord Hefe as your, your, your guiding light. All right, so. I have a p-value given here. My p-value is 0 0.0136. Alpha is given as 0 0.05. P-value is less than alpha. I, I swear to God, this is the whole practice exam. It's all been that way. I already changed one of them to show you the other way. I compensated for my faults. Was it a fault though? Really? I don't like saying that. That sounds wrong. All right, so it's less than alpha. So it's too low. So I'm gonna reject the hoe. p is too low, reject the hoe, support HA. Support HA was that P1 was greater than P2 and that Zoloft was better than placebo. Not better though? Uh, I don't know, they're not better. They uh, experienced dry mouth. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the proportion subjects who experience dry mouth for the placebo group, the, no, I'm sorry, for the Zoloft group. Is higher than the placebo group. This is one of those ways that they say, this is a side effect. Although I'm pretty sure when it's one of those drastic side effects, like, you know, death, if even one person is suspected of doing it, they, they put it down. How many of those, every single fucking commercial that I've seen for medication nowadays has been, you could have something like dry mouth, you might, you might get a stuffy nose, you might have fucking a heart attack, you might, <laughs> you might die. I'm like, uh, no, I'll keep my allergies, thank you very much. Really? <laughs> That's a hell no. I'm not taking shit that might kill me. I leave that to my food, damn it. Right? Literally all medications have like side effects from everyone. Yeah, the, usually the side effect is the desired side effect is like taking care of whatever you took it for. That is a technically effect. We only got two questions left, and then we have a group present presenting. Sorry for the last two questions. 
I only got two categories left. I've got a CI interval for proportions, and I've got the chi-square independence test. Hopefully, that's what I have on this paper. Otherwise, I fucked up somewhere on this test. Let's see. Number nine has lower limit and upper limit in it listed in it. This is my CI one. I can see it right there. A sample of 400 high school students revealed that 176 of them have a Facebook account. Stack crunch generates a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all high school students who have Facebook accounts to be between the limits of 0.3914 and an upper limit of 0.4886. What population parameter is being examined here? Uh, the parameter being examined here is the proportion of high school students with Facebook accounts. And this is a CI for proportions. So I need to give the statement of confidence. I am told that it is a 95% statement of confidence. So we are 95% confident. that the proportion, I am literally just copying down this shit right here. That the proportion of all high school students who have Facebook accounts is between, I should say accounts, but it looks really shitty. There we go. It is between 0 .0, 0 0.3914 and 0 0.4886. And if you wanted to write it slightly different, you could say between 39.14% and 48.86%. You can leave it as a decimal or you can write it as a percentage. Uh, it makes more sense reading it as a percentage. Like in, if I were to read it and try to interpret it, it like tells me right away. It's not quite 50%, but it's like above 40% kind of thing. It'd be even better when everyone's taking that final. It's just deathly silent in here. I just pull that fucking rip cord. Right? <laughs> it's going to be even better if I shut the door. Wrap it in here. Right? <laughs> the doors are locked from the outside. Bring it on the glass. All right, everyone ready? All right, so last question. I have a chi-square independence left. That should be what this is. I see a table. I see, it looks like food preferences. A random sample of 100 COS students produce the following food preferences. Males and females versus Italian, Chinese, and Mexican food. At the 0 0.05 level, test the claim that food preference is independence of gender. This is a chi-square test of independence. I 
I think it's very, very, very important that you take note that just because it says chi-square on the page doesn't mean it's the chi-square test. The goodness of fit question, when you read the goodness of fit, the goodness of fit also says chi-square. That has percentages. Right. I just said there is a difference. Both, to both of them, both goodness of fit and chi-square say chi-square on them. So just because you see chi-square doesn't mean it's the chi-square test. You got to track goodness of fit versus chi-square. But this is a table, and I got more than one row and more than one column. This is a chi-square test for independence. The test here is that uh, rows and columns, or in this case, gender and food choices are independent. And HA is that there is some form of dependence. Between gender and food choice. It looks like even just looking at the result without looking at the p-value stuff, more guys like Mexican food than Italian, and it was opposite for, for females, Italian over Mexican. Huh. This is like the little thing like What? No idea what you're talking about. You had a thing said for four questions for extra credit. Where? Oh, can I miss it? Oh, did I? Yeah. 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 And he says we get credit whether we get the question right or not. Son of a bitch, that was for last semester. I never took it off. I got to give it to you if I, you guys did it. Yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> God damn it. In the final, that would come to the final. I know, it's not on the final. I know where it said it. You don't have to fucking remind me that I've done fucked up. There you go. You got free extra credit online just for answering a fucking survey. It's only four points. Don't get all excited. Take them. If I did like a 69% of those posts, it could be one year. It could. There you go. If that 4% could be the, the game breaking. Okay, I hope not. Yeah. All right, so let's let's finish. We're almost done here. P value is zero or less than zero point zero 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 one. So I already know this is going to be a reject. Alpha is zero point zero five because it's listed. So we are too low. P value is too low. We will reject the hoe, and we will support H A. And HA is there is a form of dependent dependence between food and gender. There is sufficient evidence that gender and food preference. have a relationship or are dependent. That's it for that. Please stick around for another six or seven minutes while I give this last group an F for doing it two days late. And I guess I'll hit stop hitting record.